It's incredibly rare that a long-running franchise actually gets to have a definitive conclusion, especially with today's obsession over endless reboots, prequels, and sequels. But on Friday, June 30th, 2023, we got the opportunity to experience one final adventure in the legacy of Indiana Jones. The fifth film in the franchise, titled Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, sees one final adventure for the iconic character played by iconic actor Harrison Ford. It's a film that's been many years in the making as 2008 was the last time we got to see Henry Jones Jr. on the big screen. In what was ultimately considered a disappointing sequel, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. While at the time Crystal Skull was a disappointment to me as well, I've definitely softened in my opinion on it as the years have gone on. Yes, the CGI is still pretty awful, and yes, the aliens are very cheesy and over the top, but I honestly do think there is a pretty fun movie in there. If you're able to refrain from comparing it too closely with the original trilogy, and look at it as much more of an homage to the cheesy B-movies of the 50s. The time period it's trying to capture was loaded with sci-fi and horror and monster flicks alike, with the same over-the-top, nonsensical feel that Crystal Skull often has. It doesn't mean I think it's anywhere near as great as it could have been or should have been, but at the very least, it's not the abomination that so many fans have built it up as. So the ultimate question is, can this new adventure that is not only the fifth in a decades-long franchise, but one that is also dubbed as the finale of the series and of the character, somehow live up to all of that pressure and hype, especially after a very divisive sequel that came before it? After beginning with perhaps the greatest action-adventure film of all time, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and continuing with an amazing sequel, in my opinion an amazing sequel, Temple of Doom, a brilliant return to form with The Last Crusade, and then an underwhelming revitalization in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, how does the Dial of Destiny live up to the legacy of Indiana Jones? Well, in my opinion, I think it's a worthy goodbye to the character although it definitely doesn't meet the feel or the standard of the original trilogy. This is a non-spoiler review, by the way, as I would much rather people see the film for themselves rather than judge it without having seen it. Dial of Destiny sees Henry Jones Jr. in the twilight years of his life and career, with Indy retiring from teaching and living on his own in an apartment, seemingly having very little excitement left in his life. Indy ultimately finds himself thrust into one final adventure in search of a relic of his past. In order to prevent a group of Nazi sympathizers from finding the artifact first and discovering its ultimate power. Yes, the plot sounds familiar because it is familiar, though that honestly doesn't bother me too much as I think the whole point of doing another film in the first place was to sort of get things back to basics and go out with a much less out there plotline than from what we saw in Crystal Skull. The central villain of the movie, played by Mads Mikkelsen, was a great choice in my opinion and really does end up being someone we look forward to seeing get what's coming to them. Indy's main sidekick of the movie is his goddaughter Helena Shaw, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who winds up being much more of an antagonistic character for Indy to deal with than I was expecting, but I think it works for the most part aside from some jokes and comedic moments that probably should have been left out. The script and dialogue overall, though, is a vast improvement from Crystal Skull, with many more realistic, conversational moments that feel a lot more authentic than last time. Put simply, it feels like we're seeing real conversations between real people. It's not as over-the-top this time around. One thing I do have to criticize, though, and it pains me to say this, but the directing of James Mangold is probably the weakest part of Dial of Destiny. The action scenes in particular are really missing the experience and imagination of Steven Spielberg, who stepped away from directing duties as he wanted the final indie film to be given to a younger, up-and-coming filmmaker. Unfortunately, though, 
it's pretty clear that Mangold is playing it really safe here, with most of the film's biggest action pieces being pretty tough to focus on at times. So much of the action is close up and chaotic, to the point where it can become really tough to tell what's going on. With Spielberg, action sequences were always expertly shot and gave you a full and clear view of what was happening. There were fewer camera cuts and wider shots to really hammer home the spectacle of what was happening on screen. Like I said, it pains me to criticize James Mangold as I absolutely loved his work on Logan, and that film was what made me excited that he had been given the reins for this final indie film. I figured he'd put the same creativity and imagination into the film as Spielberg always tried to put in. Whether it was studio direction or just an intentional choice, much of the Dial of Destiny does feel very modern in the way it's shot, and is missing the nostalgia and charm of Spielberg's eye for the craft. That all being said though, that doesn't mean the film is bad, because in my view, it's absolutely not. I honestly had fun with this film and enjoyed seeing Harrison Ford put his heart and soul into this role one last time. The effort on Ford's part shines through clearly to me and further proves why no one should ever take over the reins of the whip and the hat. Now, as far as the ending of this film, again, I'm not going to spoil anything for you here because I truly do feel that this film is worth your time if you're a hardcore Indiana Jones fan, but for me, the ending is actually really interesting and unique, as bizarre as it may be. I've seen a lot of people bashing the movie for the ending, calling it silly and unrealistic, which, if you're actually a fan of this franchise, is a pretty asinine criticism to make. To me, the conclusion feels right out of the classic Indiana Jones stories of the 80s and 90s, especially the novels and comics that spun off from it. I even did a video a while back on these novels, as I found them to be fascinating and unique in their own right. The place we end up going to in Dial of Destiny is not as far out of left field as you may think and has certainly been explored before in other indie stories of the past. Part of the charm and experience of these films is the artifact, and the experience of seeing what these artifacts could do if their legendary supernatural powers were real. I had no issue with aliens in Crystal Skull either, and didn't like what they did simply because of how overboard they went with it. They just showed too much, but honestly, We've got to stop pretending that these movies aren't loaded with crazy supernatural moments. The world of Indiana Jones feels real, and ultimately, when we are shown the ominous and foreboding realities of these mysterious relics by the end of the movies, it's that much more shocking and memorable of a moment. We've literally seen ghosts melt the faces and explode the heads of Nazis, someone's heart be ripped out of their chest and the whole seal back up by itself, and a cup cause someone to age to the point of disintegration. I think it's safe to say being realistic isn't the goal here. These films are meant to be fun and entertaining adventures with action, suspense, horror, comedy, and emotion rolled up into one big rolling boulder. The ending of Dial of Destiny is a memorable one, and is devoid of badly CG'd aliens, so I'm not afraid to say I enjoyed it. Like I said before, I feel like the intent here was to bring Indiana Jones back to something basic. In my opinion, it mostly works. The de-aging CG still looks bad to me, and more than likely always will, but the reality is we're gonna have to live with it until Hollywood gets the obsession out of its system. There wasn't really anything I hated about this film, and I'm okay with this being the goodbye to this beloved franchise. But even though the film franchise is bidding farewell, the truth is that Indiana Jones will continue to live on with a proud legacy. We've now got five films to rewatch, re-experience, and grow with. Not to mention, today's obsession with nostalgia has brought us more memorabilia, merch, and spin-offs to dive into than ever before, further solidifying this character's place in the Museum of Nostalgic History. It belongs in a museum! So do you! So thank you to Harrison Ford, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, John Williams, and everyone else who helped keep this franchise alive 
for so many decades, and for giving us fans one last crusade to take with Indy. Although it may be time to ride off into the sunset, Indiana Jones will always live on with the richest antiquities of pop culture history. So I'd love to know your thoughts on the Dial of Destiny down in the comments below, and would love to know your fondest memories of this classic franchise. Be sure to hit that like button, and please subscribe for many more 90 nostalgia trips to come in the very near future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.